Lord, we love you. We just thank you that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We thank you that you're holy, that you can be uh, here tonight among us and that you're present and that you love us and you're the King of kings, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. You always were and you always will be. Lord, help us just to lift your name high tonight, Lord. I just pray over this room and everything that we're battling, every frustration, Lord, every uh, just that binds us in the sin and the, the sin that so easily entangles us. Lord, help us just to be free tonight. Help us to call on your name. Help us just to be who you've called us to be. Lord, I just pray that above all that you would just be the King of kings, the Lord of lords of our life, Lord. And it's in the precious name of Jesus that we can pray. Amen. 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 Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That verse is awesome. Good stuff. I want to tell you a, a little story about something that happened to me about uh, a month ago. And I don't know if you're like me at all, but man, there's so many things in life I just want to do it by myself. And I just want to do it. And then so many times I get caught up thinking the more I do, the more God will bless me. Or maybe if I do all that I can or buy into that old uh, junkie saying that said, you do your best and God does the rest. That's not scripture. Not in the Bible anywhere. But I still get caught up in it. And so uh, some friends of ours asked us to come to a meeting they were having at their church. And this evangelist prophet guy was going to be there. And so Penny and I go, and it's on a Friday night. And all week long, my right shoulder had just been killing me. No matter what I did, it was hurting. And it's like it was just frustrating. And so we get there uh, that night, and our friend calls, and they have somebody that watches the door, kind of like we have find a police officer that watches our building and he said, hey, I'm running late. Would you mind to watch the door till I get there? I said, sure. So I'm up out of the way watching the door. The service is going on. And so they're having worship and we're singing and all of that. And I know y'all are not going to believe this, but I get a little distracted by a text I got on my phone. No. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm sitting there and it was a text from, I don't even know who it's from, so I, I read that and I kind of fumble a little bit and I look a little more and all of a sudden I feel in my right shoulder this power and it was not like a pop but it was just gone. Boom. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. It's gone. Okay, y'all hang with me. At the same time, this evangelist guy that I don't know, he said, somebody's right shoulder in this room just got healed. And I was still playing with my phone. I'm thinking, that's me. He's <laughs> God's cool. You know, I like that. And so we went on and we went on the service and, and every few minutes, folks, no kidding, I mean, they probably thought he was doing the chicken dance. So I was like, wow, that's not hurting anymore. This is me. And then God impressed something on my heart. He said, Jason, you didn't even ask for that. I just knew you needed it and I did it for you. And I was thinking, wow, because you know, had I wanted him to do that, I would have thought, oh, I better go get me a sling. I better go in. I better find four people. I better get them to pray for me. I better sing extra loud. I better pray hard. Better fast it all week. Well, we're not going to go that far. <laughs> <laughs> I would have said, let me find that man of God. Can you put your hand on my shoulder? Would you do that? I didn't have to do any of that. God just did it. I didn't even ask. Yeah. And he impresses on me. I'm so hard-headed all the time. Let me do what I want to do. I'm just thinking in your lives in this room tonight, does anybody get that where you just, you're trying to just to do things on your own? You're trying to do what you can do. And God's saying, just let me do the new work in your life. You see, there's nothing that we can do. We can't be good enough, fast enough, smart enough, cute enough. We can't know enough of our Bible verses. We can't know all these things and do all these things for God to love us any more than he already does. And we all have this equalizer in our life. And that's the sin that comes into us. The scriptures tell us that all of us have come short of the glory of God. So there's nothing that we can do. So if there's nothing that we can do, why can't we lean on the one who can? Yeah. And that's Jesus Christ. You see, he came to this earth and he lived a sinless life and he showed us each day how that we can be perfect through him. How that we can have rest through him. How that While that scripture was written, he made us to lie down. He makes us to stop. He makes us just that we can be who we are because of who He is. 
See, today is my grandson Ezra's sixth birthday. And I thought about how six years ago when he came into this world, there was nothing that he could do on his own. Nothing. But I couldn't love him any more than we did. Everybody that gathered around him in that room couldn't love him. And what was he? He was a baby. And what could he do for us? Nothing. And I think about how we can take that love and the love of the Father who we can't do anything on our own except just accept the love and the grace that he gives. And that's why he went to that cross so that we could not only have life more abundant, but we could also have salvation. Because you see, in this room tonight, each of us have to make a decision. Am I going to continue to live life my way or am I going to live life God's way? Am I going to turn my life over to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and let him do it or am I going to keep trying to do it my way? And I'm here to tell you, when we turn it over to God, things go so much better. Right. And you know, even preparing this altar call this week, so many frustrating, frustrating things have happened to me that at one point I thought, God can't even use me on Wednesday night because I've been so frustrated all week that he's just going to be tired of me. And guess what? There you are again, God. You showed up. Yeah. So if you're tired tonight, if you're frustrated tonight, if things are not going the way that you want them to go, maybe it's a good time to turn it over to the Lord. Yes. Maybe it's a good time to say, God, I'm ready to try it your way for a little bit. You know, and I would just ask you to do that. If you've never made that relationship with Jesus important in your life, number one in your life, tonight is the night to do that. The scriptures tell us today is the day of salvation because he came from that cross. He went and defeated hell. And on the third day, he rose again. And because he rose again, we can have life. Woo. And we can have life more abundant. That ought to give us something to shout about. Yeah. Would you just bow your heads with me for, for a moment? I just want to ask you. Have you come to the place where you said, I'm tired of me, and God, I want you? You come to the place where I, I just can't do this on my own anymore. God, I feel you stirring in my heart, and I don't know exactly what it is, but I know that I want you to lead me. And the good news is, he's ready to do that. And if you're ready to make that decision, I would ask you, on the count of three, if you would just lift your hand so that I know who I'm praying with. It's a decision that you'll make to be the most important decision of your life. And we're not going to call you out. We're not going to make an example. We're not going to ask you to come forward. I just want to know who we can pray with. So on the count of three, if you need Jesus tonight, would you just lift your hand? One, two, three. Ooh, I see that hand. Woo! We've got some more time. God's good to us all the time in here. His blessings in when our life in. Because church, he's coming back. And he's coming back. And when he comes back, he's coming back for his bride. And he's coming back for us. And he's coming back from those who've made the decision to call on him. Tonight's night. Anybody else? All right. Well, I'm going to lead us through a prayer. I'm going to give you the words. And you give it the meaning. And out of that, we're going to. We're just going to ask God to be first place in our life. Would you pray with me? Father God, Father God I thank you, I thank you for, the gift for the gift of your son, of your son Jesus. Jesus. I believe in his death, I believe in his, death his, burial, his burial, and his resurrection. And his resurrection. Come, into my heart, Come into my heart. Save me. Save me. I make you, I make you the, Lord the Lord of my life, of my life from, this day forward. from this day forward. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. He tells us that he will. And we have a card that I want to put in your hands. And we have some ushers in the back. And they have some cards. And they're going to make their way up the aisle. And if you'll just take that card and let us know that you made that decision. And I just grab one from them and say, uh, fill it out for us. Put it in the info booth in the back or in the offering bucket. It doesn't matter. And we have some things as a church that we want to walk with you. And then we want to go forward with you and we want to do life with you because it is the church and we were meant to do life together. Amen. And so if you're happy to be in the house of the Lord, say amen one more time. Amen. Turn around, find somebody.